Thank you for tuning in to the Shikama Live Show with your host, Shikama. Today I'm talking about black people listening to sellouts. Now, not a lot of ignorant black people hear me, and because of their ignorant ghetto training, would call me a sellout. I'm not selling out to anybody. I'm not giving away the secrets to the, the kingdom. I'm not kowtowing to anybody. But I'm going to tell you what's really going on. And I'm trying to warn you to stop listening to sellouts. When you call someone a sellout, the listener normally closes his ears and runs screaming. Because in this politically correct world, making someone responsible for their words and their actions is actually frowned upon. I want you to put on your big boy pants right now. I want you to put on your big girl pants right now. I'm sorry, big girl panties. I want you to lift your chin up and understand that if someone lays all their cards on the table and 90% of them backstab the very people that they say they are trying to help, that guy's a sellout. I'm going to repeat that so you understand that clearly. If the person that you idolize, that you hear preaching, that you watch their TV show, that you see all their movies, if you were able to get them face to face in a private conversation and say, let's take a look at your entire body of work, including your personal life, and they lay all their cards on the table so that you can see everything that they have done and said, and 90% of those cards actually hurts black people, well, that person's a sellout, and you're a fool for listening to them. I'm just trying to be honest. You cannot constantly say that you're helping black folk, and all the while, you're cursing them. You cannot constantly say that you're helping black folk, and all the while, you're making them have abortions. You cannot constantly say that you're helping black folk, and all the while, you're turning them against the people that make them wealthy. You cannot constantly say you're helping black folk, and all the while, you're teaching them to hate the very people that are fighting for their freedom. You cannot constantly say you're helping black folk, and all the while, you're putting them in the back of the bus. Or better yet, under the bus. You cannot constantly say you're helping black folk, and all the while, you're keeping racism and bigotry alive and kicking. These people below have done all of this. Search each statement that I just said. Keep your big boy pants on. And open your eyes and see what is going on around you and to you. Let me see. Can I identify these people? Some of these people you're going to say, but no, 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 they're for black people. No, you need to look deeper. You need to look beyond the surface. You need to look beyond the photo opportunities when they have their hair pressed, when they have their $3,000 suits on. You need to look beyond that. You need to see what they're doing behind closed doors, how they are destroying your community. Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, Barack Obama, the Attorney General, the Congressional Black Caucus, the NAACP, the Urban League, Louis Farrakhan, Van Jones, Tavis Smiley, Lil Wayne, the Wayans, Jay-Z, Kanye West, Maxine Waters, Whoopi Goldberg, Hip Hop and Rap in general, Dr. Lamont Hill, and others. They come in front of you. They talk a good game. Oh, yes, we black people. And what the problem is, is that when they say black people, they're not talking to black people. They're talking to white people. And they, they have their handouts or they're giving excuses or they're trying to rile up black people while they talk. 
If you notice, all of my things, all of my videos, when I address black people, I point out a problem and I present a solution. And normally my solution says that you need to get your own money. You need to get your own power. You need to help your own people. Why is it an Italian can fall off the boat and be working with a good job within two weeks? Or a Filipino? Or a Jew? Or a white person? Or a Mexican? Why is it that if a black person grows up in the same neighborhood and asks everybody in the neighborhood for a helping hand to get that person a job, they all turn to him and say, you better get your own, I got mine. Or even if that person goes off to college and comes back to help the black people, they're a bunch of haters. Because all of these people that I just listed are telling you that you don't need to do that. They're, they're training you that you don't need to be like the Jews. Oh, don't be like the Jews. Don't be like the, the, the filthy Filipinos. Don't be like the dirty Mexicans. Black people, you need to look and see what success really is. Don't listen to anybody. Even don't listen to me. I will show you the roadmap. If you don't like what I'm saying, just listen to what, where I point you to. We need to learn everything about the Jews. Learn everything about the Mormons. Learn everything about the Chinese and defeat, and defeat, and defeat our enemy. That's what we need to do. What has Al Sharpton done for the black community? What? Jesse Jackson, what has he done? Manning, Representative Manning, what has he done? Obama, what has he done? He has destroyed the black middle class, destroyed it. Just, I mean, just stomped it, stomped on it, set it on fire, thrown it off a cliff. And if you're too stupid to realize that, I want you to, I want you to close your eyes for a second and think that Barack Obama was white. Tell me what that white guy has done for the black community. Absolutely nothing. He stomped on all of your necks, stomped on your babies, encouraged you to get an abortion to kill off your next generation. Wake up. Stop listening to these sellouts. I want you to succeed. I want you to have power. I want you to be on equal footing. And trust me, as much people, as much as people say yeah, racism isn't alive and well, it is alive and kicking. And the only reason, really, way to defeat racism is if you have undeniable power. That's the only way. You know, we used to look down on the Chinese. Oh, China, China. <laughs> let's go over there and get that cheap, that cheap stuff from them. Oh, let's, let's get that fantastic Chinese porcelain and buy it on the cheap and turn around and sell it to Americans for premium dollar. That's what we thought of the Chinese. And the Chinese said, Oh, yeah, really? Okay. Let's see how this is handled. We are going to run a government that looks out for the Chinese country, that looks out for the Chinese person. That's how we're going to run our government. You want to exploit your own workers? That's fa that's fantastic. Uh, you want to exploit your own markets? That's fantastic. In the meantime, we'll be buying gold and silver and getting the mineral rights to Africa, Australia, South America, Middle or uh, Central America. We'll be working over here in the corner while you're calling us names and calling us chink and gook and all that other stuff. I want you to learn from those lessons. You don't have to have your hand out like Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson and Manning and Obama says. You don't need to be getting abortions. Oh, she's too poor to handle it. You know what? We've survived. White people did it too. Poor white people came over here in droves. Whole countries of poor white people came over here in droves. They had their babies 
and now they're running stuff. I don't curse, though. So. Oh, in the Urban League, what have they done for you? The NAACP, what have they done? You have, uh, uh, Maxine Waters over there, uh, bilking the entire community for millions of dollars. What has she done for you? But you keep electing her. What, what's, what, what, what's, what's going on here? Who cares about racism? Get power and racism won't matter. Look at all the Asians. They were quiet the entire time. Civil rights. No, there was no Asian during the civil rights. But when they were building the uh, railroad, they were called all sorts of names. Now they have Chinatown in every city, every major city. And you can't go there unless you're going to start doing some trade with somebody from Asia. And they circulate and circulate and circulate that money. The money comes in, but it doesn't get out. It's like the Roche Motel. That's what black people need to do. Stop listening to these charlatans. And I know people are going to start just frothing at them. Oh, Minister Farrakhan is, is so down for the black man. Really? He killed the person who was down for the black man. Go look that one up. He has done everything behind the scenes to do what? Make himself rich. And when somebody calls in on his, on his stuff, what does he do? He apologizes. Oh, I didn't mean to call the Jews that. Really? That's a man? You know, I stand behind every word that I say. I stand behind every word I say. Any any controversial topic that I say, and I've said something controversial on that controversial, I stand behind it. Why? Because I believe in what I say. If I'm going to say something about the Jews, I'm going to say it. Because I believe it. I'm not going to say something I don't believe in. If I say something about white people, it's something that I believe. And, uh, and most times, it's not something unrealistic. It's based in reality. It's based in fact. I'm going to show you the documentation if you really want to press me for it, but you can go look it up yourself. I know you're just, oh, Whoopi Girl Goldberg, she's just so awesome. Oh, the weigh-ins, they're just so fancy. Hip-hop is, the, I have, we have to have our hip-hop when no black person has won a number one record in hip-hop, soul, rap, jazz, blues for a year or two, not even in the top 100. You know, it's over. The game is over. They figured out the game. They, they've got a formula for it. That's not your genre. It's not yours anymore. It's somebody else's. Go find something else new. Maybe that uh, Afropunk or something. You need to understand, wake up and look around and, and see the world for what it really is. These people do not have your best interests at heart. I do. I actually care about you. I represented America when I was working for the U.S. Foreign Service. I represented America. I'm the one who had to stand up in front of people, smile, shake their hands, uh, kiss their babies, and uh, and uh, go to tea, go to afternoon tea. That's what I did growing up all the way up until college. That's how, that's how I uh, grew up. That was my life. So I have represented, quote, unquote, America and, quote, unquote, black America. These other people, they don't represent anything but themselves. But themselves. Trust me, Farrakhan takes money from poor people and puts it right in his pocket. You can listen to me for free. I get my money just by you listening. You don't even have the courtesy to like my videos. But you can listen to me for free. I don't get my money from you directly. You can benefit from everything that I say for free. Tell me what you think. Thank you for <laughs> tuning into the Chicago Live Show. Don't listen to these charlatans, these sellouts, these sambos. Thank you.